Welcome back to Module 4 Analysis, where we're in Part 2 of the Select Phase. In this module, I went very number heavy. I went into calculations utilising the Google Sheet. So I'll go back over those profit fundamentals and I'll fill in any blanks because the content in the videos was very step by step. What I'm trying to achieve inside this module is important. We're trying to work out what the profitability is going to be on the item before we not only order it in quantity, but even before we buy any samples to test out. We can now calculate profitability before it comes to Amazon, before it starts to even sell to a consumer. If we can get all these different variables ahead of time, we can start calculating using the Google Sheet and determine the profitability of the product. This module is about getting things like weights, dimensions and pricing. The weight and dimensions will affect the type of freight you're going to utilise and this is going to impact your landed cost price as well as your profitability. Understanding these things puts you head and shoulders ahead of pretty much every other seller out there. Most people don't understand profitability and don't calculate things like POR and POI. You can now understand exactly the drivers that are affecting your profitability. If you understand these fundamentals, then you know what things we can tweak, such as our freight, and where we can make savings over time. This is a good thing in general, but we don't want to always make savings just to save money if we end up getting a poor service. There might be some situations where we might have an opportunity cost if we don't get stock to sell at Amazon faster, because it takes longer to send using sea freight compared to air freight. But this is a more advanced concept. When I uh, want you to start thinking that way, um, I want you to try to you know, put my brain into your brain as much as I possibly can. I think getting to the core of business, the core of your business, is to make a profit and to make money. It's not to sell hundreds of thousands of units. If selling hundreds of thousands of units makes you profit, that's okay. But it's not about just selling numbers of units. We want to make profit. And I know, I know that may sound very, very obvious, but to a number of people in business, it's not obvious. They are going more for turnover. They are going for sales units. And there's a lot of people that are just going for volumes. Instead of actually calculating what the profitability is of their company, and therefore each line, so that's why I went into detail in these videos in this module. We are selling on Amazon and we don't own the customer list and we're okay with that. Other people will tell you that you need to own and you need to, to build a customer list. You'll hear people talk about customer lists with e-commerce quite regularly. The thing they're not telling you is that when you build up that customer list, the only way they can make money is to sell to those customers again and again and again. Now, we're not building customer lists off Amazon because we're utilizing Amazon's inbuilt customers and we're selling products to them. If you own an e-commerce store, then it's all about sales, it's all about customers. But what happens if you cannot resell to the customer you've created? Well, you just don't make any money. So if you try pushing products onto Amazon and you try to go into more competitive markets, it's gonna force you to wait for possible product which may never come. I'm not saying e-commerce out of Amazon doesn't work. What I'm saying is that it's, it's a completely different game. It's a game in which you're acquiring a customer and then you want to resell to that customer over and over again. You need a lot of products to be able to do that. You need products that are profitable to be able to sell to do that continuously. We already have inbuilt customers on Amazon ready for us to sell to. Amazon are acquiring all these customers for us and they're allowing us to sell to them. That is why profitability upfront in this style of business is critical. Do not wait for profits. Day one, we want to make profits. When you make a sale, you should know your POR. If it's 30% and you sold something for 20 bucks, you know you've made $6 profit before tax. You need to understand and be aware of these fundamentals that I taught POI and POR. Your products using Amazon FBA have to be extremely profitable. That's a good thing. And you want to know well in advance that um, you know, you're going to be profitable. POR is a retrospective look of what profits you've made. POR lets you see what profits that product has done over a period of time. You could apply the percentage of your POR to that turnover or revenue, and then you know what your profitability was. The other thing that we use and we gauge is POI which is your profit on your investment, so that you know ahead of time 
if I'm buying a product and if it's $2,000, then I'm making 100% uh, POI, then I know then what products sells out that I'll, I'll make an extra $2,000. So POI is about what profit it will make in the future. And POR is about what profit it made retrospectively. Now that you've gone through this module and you understand these calculations, when you hear people say, I made $60 profit, or I have a 60% margin, you can now say, well, was that profit on, on investment or is that profit on your return? To which they'll say, what are you talking about? They won't understand that. And the thing about it is that 60% they're calculating, we have no idea what that is based on. Absolutely none whatsoever. People will use many different calculations. Many people don't take into consideration all the costs. What I'm talking and, and looking at doing here is as much as possible is including every single cost to get a true net profit figure before tax. And when I say tax, I mean corporation tax and all that. I'm allowing for sales tax in the US or VAT tax in the EU. So when people say 60%, we have no idea what they're calculating. To get a 60% POR is very difficult to do. The Amazon fee is around 15%. You'll, you'll also have a sales tax of about 10% in the US and about 20% in the EU. Then you're going to have an FBA fee and you'll have the fee to get that out to the consumer, which depends on the weight and the size of the product. But you could look at an average of about 20%. Now immediately we're down 50%. So are you getting 60% if the fees associated with it are 50%? And they still haven't bought the item. So these figures don't really stack up. Whereas Whenever we're talking about this and, and we're saying these things, our numbers completely stack up. Our numbers are mathematically irrefutable. 30% of your sales price is going to be your profit on return. Our profit fundamentals will be accurate. An example of where you can sell something for quite a high sales price and likely make a much higher PLR would be in the case where you built your own e-commerce website. You then build a community around that where people are interested in, say, fitness, for example. You have a fitness website and it's community based around a fitness app, let's say. And with the app, you sell a workout map that goes with the app you've created. Well, when you have maybe thousands of customers for this example, they're all going through the app and they see you using that specific fitness map. So that's an example of where you could sell something significantly higher than what you can on Amazon. That's not the business that we are in. We're using Amazon FBA and we're finding opportunities getting those products to Amazon and selling them successfully. It's not a bad thing, it's just the way it is. It will cost a lot of money and time to do what I just described in the fitness website example. We're not in, we're not in the business of doing that. We're fulfilling demand on the Amazon platform. I taught you that we don't create products. We fulfill the demand of those items already selling. I want you to understand that Amazon is your marketplace and it's going to be your sales channel. So do it the right way. I'm not trying to merge two things together. I'm giving you a step-by-step -step process and a mechanism to move products onto Amazon and sell them very effectively and also very profitably. When somebody speaks to you about their business, you understand your business and you can say, that's not actually the business I'm in. I'm in a different business completely. I'm glad that's working for you, but this is what I'm doing. And building these websites that are separate to Amazon take a lot of work. They, they take a lot of time and they're for people who have different goals. We're looking to build a passive lifestyle business. Building something like that which requires community and ongoing work is a different business that requires more input. Whereas our Amazon FBA business is something that requires very little input and is very profitable at the same time. So moving on, I'll talk about cost price. We've needed to find out from our supplier what it will cost to manufacture our item. I taught you about using Alibaba and finding suppliers, negotiating with them, and using the script to get your cost prices. I explained that FOB is a term that means free on board, and it means that it's the supplier's responsibility to get those products in your order to the ship and, and load it on at the port. Generally, we get this price wherever, you know, when we're shipping by sea, because you need to move it to the port. So we might as well have the supplier do that, and we know that there are no other charges to get our products onto the ship. XWorks, or EXW, refers to when we want to use air freight, and we don't need to move it from a factory to a seaport. The products move from the factory to an airport or a courier company. 
So, and these two terms can sometimes be confused and some people might wonder which one is better. Well, neither one is better. If you're going to ship by sea, then you might as well get an FOB price. And if you're shipping by air, then EXW is the price you need. I discussed our Amazon sales price, and this price tells us what our Amazon referral fee will be. So if you're selling on Amazon at $19.99, and we know what category we're selling in, we can then determine what that Amazon figure will be. I discussed weight and how it's going to determine your FBA fee. I discussed the dimensions which are important to know so we know what freight costs will be ahead of time. The dimensions will determine the size tier that you're in with Amazon FBA. <clears throat> and these are very important to know. If you don't calculate them properly, they can really impact you. I'm not saying that your product has to be small or large or light or heavy. What I teach you in the Intelligent Sales Machine program is to make the numbers work. If the numbers work, then you open up a whole new catalog that you're able to research instead of those gurus telling you to avoid certain weights or dimensions. I don't limit what you can research by weight or dimension, except for the items greater than one metre on the longest side or items greater than 22 kilograms. You'll be in the minority here because you're going to be able to do things that the vast majority of people are not focusing on because they're taught to do small and lightweight items only. I don't want you to have a fear about selling something that's 10 kilograms in weight. You can. It's just going to change certain things. You won't air freight something like that. You're going to bring your product in via sea freight. And if you do find products which are heavy and large and have a low retail price when you start to calculate the profit fundamentals, then the numbers won't work. So you'll, you'll just move on and you'll find a more profitable product. In this training program, you found products that have passed the search phase and then passed the shortlist phase part one. But if the numbers don't work out in the shortlist phase part two, you can put a line through it and move on to the next product. I've been emphasising how important it is to have a bank of products that you're researching because if you're ruling products out and you've only got limited research, you might be tempted to manipulate what I teach you and break the rules and guidelines that I've taught you so far. I want you to follow the lessons and the profit fundamentals in this module. We only want to have profitable products and the reason is because we're taking a risk to sell private label products using Amazon FBA. So we want a good reward for our efforts. We are investing our capital and we're looking to get the best return. The profit fundamentals ensure we would at least double our money on that investment once it sells out and that's a good return. We want a good return on what we've got to do for the money. We want a good return for the time we've got to wait to sell and get a return on our money. You've got to be doubling your money at the very least. So to recap from the videos in this module, our POI target is 100% and our target for POR is 30%. If your product comes in higher, that's no problem as long as you are calculating it correctly. You're giving yourself a realistic retail price and you've got your numbers worked out. There's no problem with higher profit. A lot of people will then say, and it doesn't come up you know, from time to time, my POI is 100% plus, but my POR is less than 30%. What do I do? Well, POI would overrule POR. In other words, if you've got that scenario where you have 101% POI and 29% POR, POR, allow POI to overrule. Then we will get the question, okay, we want to get 100%. What about 99%? And we get back into that gray area where I said you can go down to 90%. So having those targets for POI and POR will allow you to be an Amazon investor and have that kind of mentality and say, where am I best placed to invest my money? If you want to go lower than what I teach you, you can go lower, but you've got to be aware that if you're taking a lower profit like that, you're opening yourself up to a margin of safety issue. If your cost price increases at all due to maybe materials becoming more expensive and things like that, you're in a situation now where you may become unprofitable. Or if your sales price has to increase for any reason, you're not giving yourself enough wiggle room. That's why I say 100% POI allows us to make and take on slightly more cost and allows us a bit of wiggle room on the sales price. So this module was all about profitability. I want to explain profitability and why. I've covered it in great detail. I had to explain the importance of profit before we get into how to find a supplier because you need to understand the profit fundamentals before you even speak to a supplier. 
there's no point in getting a supplier, getting all these costs back and, and thinking, what do I do with these now and not knowing what and how to read them? When you contact a supplier using Alibaba.com, I explain the scenario where they just give you back one piece of the information that you asked for. You might have asked for your cost price, your MOQ, your dimensions, your weight, and maybe they emailed you only cost price. If I didn't explain the prof fundamentals to you, what would you do then? So that's why I cover the prop fundamentals first and then I teach you to contact and assess a supplier. I gave you the template that you can personalize and make it your own. You could shorten the template or you could even make it a little bit longer if you want. Whenever you start to see what's happening with the type of products that you're researching, maybe all the suppliers are coming back and just giving you cost prices. So maybe you should only go after the cost price first, then say thank you very much for the cost price. I need a couple of other variables here you could tell me a little bit more about this product. An important concept to understand is the size of one unit. That's what we're looking for, the size of one unit so that we can work out the inward shipping and the outward shipping from Amazon. It's that one unit of sale we're interested in getting the weight and dimensions. If we're dealing with a pack size, we need the dimensions of the pack size. If the pack size is a six count, then we need the weight and dimensions of the six pieces in the pack that the consumer receives when they purchase our product on Amazon. We need to know the size of the product that the consumer receives. That's what we want from the supplier or the factory and that can be difficult to get sometimes. They may come back to you and say, here is the size of a carton of these products. Well, you're gonna to have to go back to them and explain, no, it's the one piece that I want the dimensions of and the weight. You're gonna do that with two to three suppliers, as I said in the training video. The reason for this is we want backups. If we speak to somebody and they don't suit us right away, we wanna be in a position where we're not stuck and we always have other options. We wanna have two or three suppliers in place so that we can get information from each of them. Some of them may never even respond to us as I discussed in the training video. We're going to sample products from suppliers later on and we wanna get samples from more than one supplier to see what the quality is like. Some suppliers, like I said, won't respond to you on Alibaba as I said in the video, we just, we just leave it at that. We, we go back um, and we persevere and we go back after the supplier to see if we can get a response from them. And we can allow you know, a little bit of time. We don't know who we're dealing with um, at this particular point in time. It may be a smaller company. There may not be as many staff there. They may take time to get back to us. Allow them the time to get back to you. We wanna create a relationship with these people and we wanna be polite at all times. You can also contact Alibaba suppliers via Skype if they provide their details. It is a lot quicker to communicate on Skype. You can also use Alibaba's internal messaging system and you can also use the Chinese app called WeChat to communicate. There, there's just different channels of communication at your disposal. Don't rely on email and then say, oh, they didn't get back to me. You're in business for yourself now. Let's step up and get this information for ourselves. When using different messaging channels, be polite because we're trying to create a long-term business relationship. You might get even better terms with certain suppliers due to the relationship that you build up. As you progress in your business, that will really help you quite a lot. Things can happen at times with cash flow and stuff like that, and having that relationship in place really can help bail you out at certain times. Whenever you reach out to somebody that you find, they will generally say that they are a manufacturer or a factory. Some of these uh, suppliers on Alibaba will be a trading company and not a manufacturer. You're gonna see the type of products that they sell and if you see a lot of random stuff, you'll know they are a trading company. If they're selling products that are very similar in material, then they're more likely a factory. Whereas if they have you know, products made of steel and silicon and plastics and all different types of versions of wood, then it could be a trading company. Establish that with them at the start and say to them, that there's no problem if you're a trading company, you just wanna know. Say that you deal with trading companies and factories or manufacturers to put them at ease to give you the correct information. A trading company can be good to work with because if you're dealing with a factory, the MOQ can be quite high compared to the MOQ when dealing with a trading company. Even though you may have to pay a small percentage higher in cost price, you're not gonna be investing as much money in the initial stages, so you can do multiple products at one time. I taught you about PAWS inside this module. That is looking at the price, the actual dimensions, the weight, 
And then I taught you about the SKU. I showed you how easy it is to create your own SKU. It's what you're going to call your product using a shortened code of letters and numbers. You're starting to create these SKUs so that you can refer to their model number. We're going to print that on our box so we can see clearly what it is. This is a professional way of organising your Amazon business. If you don't have a SKU, it can be a flag that you don't really know what you're doing. You want to come across as you know what you're doing because really, when you go through this system that I'm teaching you, you'll be so professional compared to the average person out there, knowing what to say at all times, going in very confident, and you can feel confident right now because what you've been given here is over 15 years of experience in this kind of thing. These insights, you just won't get them anywhere else. I'm building a step-by-step -step process here for you. You want to go back and watch the training videos again. And if you have any questions, you can ask them. It might seem like there's a lot of numbers figuring out Amazon's pricing tiers for weight and then adding on the packaging weight that Amazon will add on and all that stuff that I talked about. The Google Sheet will help you calculate everything. These things can seem scary, but they're really not. They're just all different pieces of the puzzle that you've got to go and figure out so that you can accurately calculate the profitability, remembering that the spreadsheet is going to do all of this work for you. So I hope you enjoyed this module and I look forward to seeing you in the next module.